Women Talk Show. Welcome back, everybody. We're so excited. Today is our panel of power. Pop! <laughs> so we plan on bringing some excitement with you guys today because we want to try to encourage some of our queens out there to let you all know that you are valuable. I did not make a mistake with you, that you are perfectly made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so we are here today to encourage all of you. So we have some guests here today, some beautiful queens that are hanging out with us. Today we have Evangelist Janice Ruiz with us, and then we also have Dr. D on the right track with Dr. D, and then we also have Michelle Snow, career coach. So today we're going to be playing a little game, and so what we want to share with you is the same type of insecurities that you might go through or have gone through, we all have, because we're all women and we all have dealt with something. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game called Two Truths and a Lie, Transparency truths and a lie. So here, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have two of our guests, which is Michelle Snow and Dr. D. We're going to have those two guests tell us a story. They're going to tell us two truths and a lie. And then Evangelist Janice and I are going to try to guess to see which one is the truth and a lie. So if we get it wrong, if we guess wrong incorrectly, you guys have to pop our balloon. So it's two pens here, one for you, for each of you. And I'm going to move over and sit on this side. So these are going to be your two balloons. And then I'm going to have my two balloons. And so now you guys can pick and choose who wants to go first and tell us the two truths and a lie. <laughs> I will let the gracious Michelle <laughs> So okay. Michelle Snow, tell us some stories. All right, so I'm going to get these instructions right. Yeah. The way I'm told, I've got to tell you two stories that are true and one that isn't, right? Yes. Okay, so um, I actually enjoy eating soap. I've been diagnosed with sarcoidosis, and my stage name. When I play drums, is animal. So we gotta try to guess which one is a lie. Those, those, those are the two truths and a lie. You got it. Okay. You go first. And I think. Okay, go ahead. I think the lie is. You eat soap. All right, so somebody's got to pop a balloon. You got to pop a balloon. I've got to pop one, a balloon. Okay. Whoever got it right. Whoever got it right. Yes, they get to keep theirs. So if it was, if they got it wrong, if they got the lie wrong, you got to pop the one. All you got right. It wrong. Well, here we go, everybody. Ah! Oh my. Are y'all ready for this? I don't we need know. drums. I don't know. Ah! <laughs> 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 so I just want to give you a little bit before Dr. D goes into her story. The reason we got black balloons is because a lot of times our black balloons, it signifies those dark secret places. So these are those hidden dark secret places that sometimes we get under. And the whole purpose of Virtuous Woman Queen's Lair is for you to have a hideaway where you can come to a place and get restored and understand that you're not alone and you have queens around you that are going to support you, that yes. are going to love you and help you get back out there and grab life by the horns. But there's one thing you can't do and you cannot do it without God. So we want to make sure that you realize and understand how important you are to him and what your purpose is in him. All right, so next we got Dr. Oh, D. She's okay. going to tell us her two truths and a lie. Okay, so I've always had uh, some great moments and events in my life. And when I was nine years old, I met Michael Jackson backstage. My father took my sister and I. He kissed my hand. I did not wash my hand for a week. <laughs> uh, I went to East Africa and Kenya, and I would have the opportunity to touch some zebras and some, some, some monkeys and few lines. And then uh, I used to hide. I used to mask myself behind the things I would go through if I would engage myself in some activity, such as I was the school mascot um, for my undergrad at Wheaton College. And because of that, I was entered into the Boston Globes competition in Boston, in Boston Massachusetts. Hmm. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Um, Michael Jackson. I'm thinking Michael Jackson. 
That's what I'm thinking. Do you think Michael Jackson is that? So who got it? Whoever got it wrong, he got a pop from Pepper Balloons. Both of you are wrong. What? So pop our balloons? Really? I actually you got a pop. You did. Okay. Did you? Good for you. I actually <laughs> met Michael Jackson. My father was a radio personality wow. at the time. And he wow. had backstage passes and he surprised my sister and I when they were here for, um in Philadelphia to Jackson Five. Girl, so can I, I tell you how I'm with you? I wouldn't have washed my hair for a week. I think I would have put a glove together. Okay. I was in church like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So tell me, ladies, tell me a little bit about your truth. Tell me why you felt the way you do. Cause, and, and I'll tell a little bit of a truth for me. I struggled with just accepting myself. I felt like I was too skinny. I didn't feel attractive. I felt like nobody was going to ever like me because of it. I felt like I was less than because of my, you know, little daddy issues. And then I started feeling like I cared more about everybody else than I cared for myself because I just wasn't valuable. I mean, look at that's somebody you just throw to the side. And it wasn't until I really became good in Christ that I started realizing that there's more to me than what meets the eye. There's more to me that God has. And from those stories and experiences, he has groomed me to be able to help another young lady. So tell me a little bit about your stories. We'll start with you, Dr. D. Oh, wow. So for me, um, I, as I said, one of my truths was I was the mascot at my college. And it was just something, of course, as a college student, you wanted to get paid $20 an hour. I know um, that's and, but, but I think for me, as, in, as it reflects in my own personal life, the things that I would masquerade, the pain that I would hide behind. It was always interesting to see when I took off the head, the head of the mascot, um, people would be surprised that it was me. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, you know, my nickname is Didi. And so they're like, oh, that's Didi the mascot? Right. So when I'm looking at my own personal life and the sexual abuse that I've been through, um, you know, in my, in my, from my family member, in my church home, in my community, um, going through divorce, infertility, how many times have I found myself really being behind a mascot? Mm. It may not very well be that actual outfit that I wore uh, in undergrad, but there was other things that I would hide behind. The shame, the guilt, the embarrassment, the hurt, the pain, and just really saying to myself one day, I need to take off this hat. Yeah. I need to take off this, this, this mascot situation that I'm in and really face the reality that, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. You know, that's who she really is. And accept that these things happen to me, but how do I overcome that? Yeah. And in, in, in what way to be able to do that? Yeah. 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 Thank you. And, and what about you, Michelle? Let's, what about some of your truths? <laughs> well, I would say one of my truths is I couldn't remember what lie I was prepared to tell the day. <laughs> so that's my first truth. Um, the second is that I was at that concert with Michael Jackson. Um, it is still a family nice. conversation that we have today because while you didn't wash your hand for a week, I faded. <laughs> the concert. Um, and it was so funny because we were probably like nine, you know, when this happened, right? Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to share in telling my little stories is that you cannot determine who we are by looking at us today. Right. You don't know who we are by this one millisecond, millisecond in time in conversation. Um, we really are every woman. And it's time for us to be proud of that because we're in a culture today where it's, where everyone in this younger generation says, do this, stay in this lane, be in this box, maximize this one area. Um, but the truth is we're made to be multifaceted. Yeah. So while today I may not be actively playing the drums, but I'm still an animal day. All right, right now, that's what I'm talking about. Give me how I'm going to do it. Something might hurt a little bit more. I had to put some get, get gay on things and get that knee going. Um, but I'm still that girl, but I'm just not fully active in that today. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to say in this two truths or a lie is don't be afraid to be versatile. Mm -hmm. You can be excellent at something and that be your strongest gift. 
but it doesn't mean that you have to be so singular. Yeah. 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 Hey, man, I, I appreciate Thank you, ladies, so much for sharing. And we have some time, so would you want to share a little bit about your truth? I know you didn't do the, the two truths and a lie, but I know there's a story. There has to be a story behind what made you become who you are as yeah. Evangelist Gina Dura. Thank you so much. Yes, there is a story behind my praise. And sometimes we have to allow God to do what he needs to do in our lives so he can take us where he wants us to go. And I sit here as a product of divorce, of hurt, of pain, disappointment. I heard Dr. D's story. And some of those things, when people see you, they don't understand what you're really going through. Because I went to church regularly. I did everything I was supposed to do. But on the inside, there was a lot of hurt. There was a lot of disappointment. I, I was frustrated. And I realized, yes, even in the church, and I want you to know that some things will happen in our lives that we did not sign up for, we did not register for. They showed up at our door, and we had to deal with it. So here I am years later thanking God for what he had to take me through so that I could really sit here today and share some of my story. I want everyone to know that, that it's really just another chapter in your book. Mm -hmm. It's the same book. You're just mm -hmm. turning into another chapter. And actually, as you turn that page, you're moving forward into your destiny. I think about the story of Hannah and Penina, how we all have to have a Penina in our lives because we think that she's out to do us harm, but actually God puts her in our lives to do us some good, to push us into our destiny where he really wants to go. He'll have her push us into prayer. He'll have her push us into praise. He'll have her push us into getting to church and getting into worship. So for that, I am grateful. And then what I say, sometimes we always have haters. We always have people that don't like us, don't understand why, can't figure it out. But I'm grateful for each and every one of them. And I have sent them some spiritual thank you notes for allowing me to go yes. through and God can push me. And for them as well. Yes. And I think it seems like to me, it seems like we as women, we always gauge our value from what we see externally. Mm -hmm. And it's like we have to stop doing that yes. because what these people have on the outside and where God has them is completely different mm -hmm. from where I am and where the, these ladies are. So it needs to be an understanding that you should not gauge your value from external factors and that there's a purpose for the pain. There, right. That pain right. grows you. When you're growing and when you're going through these things and when, when you're hurting and you're like, oh my God, why is this? Why me? Why is this happening to me? I can't believe that happened. Or, you know, why am I still going through a certain thing? But it's building character in us. Yes. It's making us yes. stronger. It's making us be able to have that. So when the enemy comes at us with all of those different darts, we're able to stand bold yes. as a lion yes. because we know who we are in Christ. So we got to stay in your lane. That's what that means, right? Stay in your lane. Yes. Yes. Stay in your lane yes. because yeah. that's not for you. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> I can't run your race. You can't run mine. And so I often say I don't compete. I create mm -hmm. because I believe that the painful situations that I went through in life, the Bible says that your gifts will make room for you. Yes. Yes. And so I've decided to take my pain and turn it into a gift. Amen. These are gifts that God that God gave me. And people say, well, why do you think that God would cause this abuse in your life? God didn't cause abuse. Man caused that because that person was sick. But what I do know is that God healed me. And so that's a gift. And so the gift of healing, the gift of forgiveness, because I've been forgiven, I can now forgive someone else. Because I tell people forgiveness, they often say, well, forgiveness is for you, it's not for the other person. I beg to, I don't agree with that. I believe that forgiveness is for that other person because I've already been forgiven. So I have the ability to forgive. So when I go to that person that did what they did to me, I can say, I forgive you because I don't know the state that they're in, that they're still in guilt or the state or stages of shame. Yeah. But me saying, I forgive you, gives them the freedom to say, thank you, God, I've been forgiven. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it depends on what season you're in. Like, yeah, it depends on what point. race you run. Right. 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 So how do they know? How do they know when it's time to shift lanes? How do they know? What is that connection that you have to have that gives you the understanding or the direction to know which lane to go to? How do you gauge that? If you're running in this race, what is it that tells you I need to shift over? Oh, when I saw my ex-husband, I could still smile and, and give him a cup of water Amen. without being angry. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can, I can yeah. really look at that person yeah. and not feel yeah. that that anger or feel yeah. that resentment or feel jealousy. I can look at that person and say, you know, I, I've really forgiven them. And, uh, you know, I pray that as I say to them that I've forgiven them, mm -hmm. that they can sense that sense of freedom. Yeah. But when you internally know, 
Yeah. If there's no residue, there's no remnants of anger and pain, and you can walk through that door with a smile on your face and genuinely and authentically say, I love you, you have arrived. Yeah. Yeah. So when you don't have that internal hang up where when you see the person, it causes you to, to just get all upset and yeah. angry, that emotional yeah. connection. Mm -hmm. And I guess how you get that emotional freedom is by liberating yourself yeah. from the spirit. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes from the power mm -hmm. that's inside of you mm -hmm. that is given to us by the Holy that's Spirit. Right. And the Holy Spirit was sent right. to lead us and guide us into all right. truth. Yes. Remember when Jesus said, I have to leave, I can't stay here, but I will send you another. Yeah. I will send you a comforter. Yeah. I will send you one that will be with you, one that will give you direction, one that will help us with our feelings to get over some of those things that we never thought we could get over, those things that we could overcome and be who we are now so that we can live our best life. And I think Michelle said when she said that, who would have ever thought we would be where we are today? Who would ever thought? What is it do you think that makes us feel like like we're not worthy, we're not good enough. Like, you know, why do we feel as women that we get to a place where we look at someone else and say, wow, God, you keep blessing them. What about me? Why do we feel like we're not good enough? Well, for me, I believe that we are drenched, dripping wet in a culture where that is put on us from day one. You know, your baby looks like this. Or why don't you put that on them? You know, from day one, from the birthing to us going into childhood to adulthood, society uh, unknowingly is constantly putting comparisons on us. Mm -hmm. So no wonder when we become adults, we don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe that the first part of breaking that is just making the decision that today is going to be the day that I see me, yeah. you know, as, as a coach. What's important for my system is that I do not encourage my clients to go read about other people. Mm. So the new ones always say, what should I go read? Who should I go study? What book should I go get? Yours. Mm -hmm. You're the book. Yeah. Go look at you your own story. in the yes. mirror. Find out who you are because you're spending a lot of time investigating what someone else is doing. Mm -hmm. You're missing the mark of who you are. right? And I know that that's very controversial but it's the first step in breaking the cycle of I've got to be what they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Be you. That's the first step to me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And I agree with that. I think that it's important that we start to understand that. Okay. Okay. And the only way that you can do that is if you know who created you. That's right. And you were created for a purpose. Yeah. In order for you to know what that purpose is, it's just like whoever created uh, this glass mug here. Somebody created it specifically for the purpose of drinking out of. Mm -hmm. So when you create that and you have to have certain materials that have to be made, depending on the type of cup that you have, you can put hot stuff in it or you can put cold stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But you don't hear the cup complaining, well, why you got cold stuff and I can't get <laughs> hot stuff? You know, you're made specifically for a purpose. And if you need to know what that purpose is, you have to go back to the creator. You have to go back to God. You have to know who and what it is that he wants you to be. So I am just so excited. So um, I think now we're getting ready to um, move on and go to our next segment, which is our Raw on the Street segment. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hear from some of our young people that's out and see what they think and what they feel and what makes them feel like a queen. So now I'm taking it out to you, Rick Green. Out there for Raw on the Street with your girl, Lee. This is your girl, Lee, with another episode of Raw on the Street with Queen Lair. And I'm so excited to be here again. But this time, I'm sitting here with my girls from Lady Clear. And I have the opportunity to sit with them to talk to them about what it means to feel like a queen as we prepare for quarantine. Stop it. So with that being said, I have my beautiful queen bees. And while we sit back and we have been discussing exactly what it means to feel like a queen, what it means to be a queen. As we dig deep, I just want to take some time out to ask some of my queens. What is it to be a queen today? I just feel like that I've learned a lot just being around you guys in the environment. Because you are you make us such an inspirational environment. You just learn so much by just standing in the heart. And just look leading by example. And I've learned how to be here, help myself better. I've learned how to know what you want to do, and bad. And 
but I should put my scared to make myself a better person. Well, I mean, you're not going to just snap into me just one day. Oh, you need a plan for you. It's not enough. It takes time. But you need to yourself and not be afraid to show who you really are and your actual personality. Like, you don't care as much um, of what people think of you or how they look at you. You're just weak and to be unique. Not follow you. Now the raw segment as we step into the ground. A few minutes later. Kelly, we love you. Back to you guys from Lady Declare. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Reek. Thank you, young ladies. It was so good to see you all. You all added so much wonderful value. So we appreciate that. And this is what we hear from our young people. You know, what makes them feel like a queen? And so for all of those people out there, this is a moment for us to be able to encourage them. I spoke to a young lady recently, which really, really touched my heart. Because it's someone who I love and I care about. And this particular person is really struggling with accepting who God created them to be. Accepting their special anointing. They don't see their value. And literally in tears saying, why am I not good enough? Mm. How do we encourage our sisters out there? And some of, our, some of them are young and more seasoned. Because we do have seasoned women who are still struggling with just their identity, knowing who they are. What do we say to them? How can we encourage them? We'll start with you, Vincent. Well, thank you. First of all, I, I believe society has done this to us. And uh, social media, there's some good to it, and there's some also some negative to it. And like you were saying, we uh, are judging ourselves sometimes. But what I would like to encourage the ladies of all ages, I would just like to encourage you to get into the Word of God. And the a scripture that comes to me is Psalm. Mm. Uh, in Psalm 139, 14, when it says what we should do and why we should do it. Number one, it says, I will praise you. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And his works are wonderful. He mentioned it earlier. And then it goes on to say, and I know that. I really know it full well. And that simply means that once you grab a hold of that, it really won't matter what people think what they say, how they look at you, how you present yourself. If you stay rooted and grounded in the word, and it's not about being conceited, it's about being confident. Confident. Confident that yes. knowing that he that began the good work in you, he will complete it. I'm so excited because I would not always have been able to sit here in this place and feel the way I feel about myself. But when I wrap myself around the word of God and I realize what God said, that I am who I could become, I can sit here confidently, not concerned about what people think or what they say. I think one thing we need to do is we need to get over people. Yeah. We need to get over about what yeah. people think about us and really focus on what, how we feel about ourselves and learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Yes. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're great. This is a wonderful work. And we learn how to encourage ourselves. Of being confident in what God has called you Amen. to do, do and what you see. Is having a relationship just going to church? Is having a relationship when you just read a couple scriptures here and there? Like how do how do you differentiate between having prayer and praying in the spirit? You know what I'm saying? What is the difference? How do you make that connection when you actually fully engage and fully plug in to the outlet? How do you know how to do that? I don't think you can pray without being in the spirit. I hope I hope that that, that people understand that. Um, I mean, we gotta be in the right spirit. Let me say that. Um, but I don't. I mean, what do you think, Michelle? I mean, you the coach. You the life coach. <laughs> uh, Come on, coach. I want to. I want to just start to be a part of unpacking this conversation because I know I can. I can feel that you've got something that is going to be really valuable. Um, I want to back up to one point. I got a call maybe in the last few days from uh, a leader who has been very influential in a few of our lives. That's right here in the studio, and she's 64 years old, and uh, she was telling me all these new great ideas and opportunities that were coming her way. And then she began to stammer and stutter a little bit. 
and she got so frustrated because that's in the Achilles heel for her. And she says, oh, you know, remember me. And as soon as I try to say something, I said, look, it is what it is. That is just the issue and the thorn that you have. And quite frankly, I am tired of us always trying to fix what it just is there. I said, you're still brilliant. You're still winning. You're still accomplishing your goals. You're still growing. Mm -hmm. So why are we spending so much time mm -hmm. on this one little thorn? Mm -hmm. So you ask the question of, well, what do they do? The first part is, let's stop trying to fix things that are unnecessary to fix things. Yeah. yeah. Okay? So for myself, I am not polished. Not. Capital yeah. not. But yeah. I'm brilliant. Okay. But I'm sharp. But I'm creative. I'm a leader. And with results. So why am I going to sit around trying to be all polished and saying it just right? That's what makes me me. Yeah. That's why you like me because I'm raw, because I'm edgy, because I'm a little bit on the edge. I'm a little bit crazy, right? Yeah. All of those things make me special. Right. So let me stop trying to be like the queen who is a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah. And on that, hashtag the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank you so much today. Now we are actually getting ready to have our gospel recording artist, Lindsay Slayton. She is the July 2019 winner of the first annual Gospel Artist Alliance Award. Woo! New Woo! Artist of the Year and Song of the Year for her song, Joy, that was held in Chesapeake, Virginia. Woo! So let's give Joy. I have joy. I have joy. Does anybody feel joy? Does anybody feel joy? Satan wants to sift you like wheat. But no matter how hard he tries, he won't succeed. I got a father in heaven watching over me. And all I need is faith the size of a mustard seed. So when the rain starts pouring and the tide's rolling, when I'm facing the storm instead of fear, I have joy. So let the rain pour, I have joy. It doesn't matter if the rain pours, I have joy. The rain pour down, so let the rain pour down. Cause in the end, Jesus wins this I know. I have joy. We serve an amazing God. Hallelujah. Once again, you're trying to hurt me. But OMG, I am well at your defeat. I got my B I B L D and it's all I need. Yeah. On top of that, I got the blood of Jesus and it covers me. So when the rain starts pouring and the tide's rolling, when I'm facing the storm instead of fear, I have joy. So let the rain pour. I have joy. It doesn't matter if the rain pours, I have joy. So let the rain pour, so let the rain pour down. Cause in the end, Jesus wins this I know. I have joy, God's great joy, joy down 